Can you tell us something about the Chamala Mission that we're going to be supporting in the month of June? We need to be reminded that we have a theme this year at Oceanside, don't we? Reaching back, reaching in, reaching out, and reaching up. And over the course of the year, each month, we take a different portion of that and make it applicable to that month. And the month of June, we're going to be looking at reaching out. We did that back in February, didn't we, when we supported Jason Moore in his work. And the elders have decided that for this month, we're going to reach out to the Chamala Mission and Tanzania, Africa. Now all of us have heard about Chamala, haven't we? Not only once, but at least twice. We talked about it in a lesson last year. We also had Brother Hal Ferguson here on one occasion to talk about the Chamala Mission. We're going to renew some thoughts about that for just a moment. There's where Tanzania... Tanzania is. It's over in what? Southeast Africa, right on the coast of the ocean. There's the capital of Tanzania, Dodomo. As far as Tanzania is concerned, it has a population, just that little area. 59.73 million people. It's a lot of folks, isn't it? There are at least 120 indigenous languages that are spoken in that one little state. Whew. I don't even see how they get along, do you? How do you even talk to each other? 120 languages. Well, there's two predominant languages. Swahili and English are the two dominant languages that almost everybody in Tanzania speaks. As far as religion is concerned, one-third Muslim, one-third Christian, one-third traditional African cultural religion. It's a lot of difference, isn't it? The primary business is agriculture. That country faces two major problems. Poverty is one of them. Corruption in the government is the second one. Folks, that's common in so many countries today. Did you know that? And it makes it difficult on who? It makes it difficult, not on the government, but difficult on the people who live in those areas. The Chamala Mission is under the oversight of the Delreda Church of Christ in Montgomery, Alabama. They've had that now for maybe a couple of years. The location of Chamala is right there, not near the coast. It's in the southeastern part of Tanzania, Africa. What interests me about the Chamala Mission is that it's involved in so many things. It began as a mission work, but they were about to be thrown out of Africa as far as a church was concerned. The government officials came to them and they told them, unless you perform some kind of a benevolent service to the people of Africa, you're going to have to leave. 1961, they built the hospital there. It had a capacity of 50 patients and also an outpatient clinic. That hospital is still there today and has a 130 bed hospital. Some 60,000 individuals come through that hospital on a regular basis that are from that region. So they serve the population as far as their health care is concerned. Well, many babies, I think it's like 1,500 babies have been born in that hospital. Unbelievable, isn't it? Once they got the hospital up and built, they could then do evangelistic work in a much better way. From 1965 until 1971, 120 churches were established. 5,000 Christians. If you divide that, that's about 40 to 45 persons per 
congregation. Just about the size of Oceanside, isn't that something? As far as our worship services are concerned. Not only do they have a hospital there, not only are they doing evangelism there, they also have a school of preaching there. In 2004, the Bear Valley Institute went into Chamala and they established the Chamala School of Preaching. It is run almost identical to the way schools of preaching are run here in the United States. A two-year school, you've got to quit your job, you devote yourself full-time to that training, and then those men are sent out into the field to preach and to teach. They also have their own library at that particular school of preaching so those men can study and have access to the materials that they need. So what do we have? We have a hospital, we have evangelism, and we have a preacher training school. We also have two regular schools that are there. There is the Chamala primary school. Those are for the elementary kids. And then there is a secondary school, the Herring Secondary School. That's for junior high and high school kids. Now what's interesting about that school is this. To go there, you have to live there. You have to actually leave your family, come to the campus, and live right there on the campus. They have those children there and can teach them the gospel of Christ every day in those schools. That's not the only thing they have there, though. They have also have a farm. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, they now have three farms that they farm. As they've developed the Chamala mission, they realize how difficult it is to raise funds for support. Folks, works like this take thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to do well. And if every need has to be met by the outsiders, it's almost impossible to be done. So they decided we're going to do everything we can possibly do to make the Chamala mission self-sufficient. So they started these farms. They plant crops that feed everybody there in the Chamala mission. And they raise animals in order to do exactly the same thing. They take care of almost all of their food needs right there on the Chamala mission. Unbelievable. All the money that Oceanside raises over our budgeted amount in the month of June, just four Sundays, will be contributed to the Chamala mission. I want you to look at something. Last year, we raised 12000 $322 in one month for the Chamala Mission. I believe it was the best supported work of all the works we supported last year. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could do that again and send that to those individuals? Brother Hal Ferguson is a friend of mine. We grew up at the Night on a Congregation together, and he is now supervising this particular work as far as going around the states and raising funds and letting individuals know about it. He has a son who is now living over there with his family as one of the missionaries helping to train those preachers and also to spread the gospel of Christ throughout that particular region. So uh, he is locked in to that particular work. Last year y'all did fantastic helping not only this work, but about 13 others as well. You did wonderful to help Jason Moore back in February, folks. I know we can do it again. It is not money that's wasted whatsoever. 